story of my life I'll tell about the night we met And how my heart can forget the way you smile at me Hello. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Hello. My name is Peter Delane. Welcome to this director's commentary for Flombard's wonderful period piece, adapted from the books by K. M. Payton. I never read them. Never and didn't want to cloud my judgment. So never read the books. And many weeks I <laughs> didn't read the script. <laughs> Directing on instinct. <laughs> my instincts always been, always been very bad. Benchorn, la da 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 da, la da 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 da, la da 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 da. We were in the trees, from shadow to light, and I was very, very protective of my actors. I actually didn't want Christine McKenna, who who is our female rider here, to do this ride. I was already for Rocky Collins, our stunt man, to step in, but Christine was was confident. Look what she does. She's she's completed the run. She gets the crest of the hill. And her little message then to me comes just about now. Uh, she turns her horse, and that's her message to me. Peter, you're a horse's ass. <laughs> little giggle. <sighs> but enough of that. Back to the drama. And that's a wonderful shot, shooting through grass. Well done, Denny Hall, on camera. Very short man, medically a, a dwarf. Actually narrowly lost out in the role of the quirky droid R2-D2 in Star Trek. I'm sorry, what am I saying? Not Star Trek, is it? Star Trek Next Generation. Made do with the consolation prize of six weeks as an Ewok on uh, Return My Jedi. And that's a nice shot. Through the back of the chair. Well done, Denny. Pan round. Bang. Classic Delane. Character foreground. Light source background. I've done my job. But I can't rest because I have another job on my hands now. In we go. And look what I've got here. Lady in a bed another lady standing. And that means one thing only, the eyes. The eyes are going to tell the story. Rebecca Stevens, hooded, sleepy, ill. Christine McKenna, clear, bright. And that's what I'm playing with. We don't want any charity. Well done, Rebecca. Look at Christine. Christine McKenna, mother of Paul. You can see where he gets it from, can't you? Look at that. Look into my eyes. You're feeling sleepy. <laughs> You're eating an onion. You think it's an apple. <laughs> I actually went to see him once in, in, in Bista and had the best night of my life. Couldn't get in, and went across the street to a little tapas bar instead. Ordered off menu and had my first taste of tiramisu. Not realising, of course, it's alcoholic content and fell off the wagon that very night. <laughs> Woke up in Glossop with a sleeping bag on my head underneath the war memorial. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Right, we move on. Bread, what does that tell us? Well, it's symbolic. It symbolizes life, hope, toast, the sex of the bare chest, the sex of the carrot. Very phallic. And there's the knife for all our Jewish viewers. I ruffled a few feathers on Flombards when I cast Bruce Forsyth. There were lots who said he couldn't handle a dramatic role. Well, I think they're wrong. Old Peter Delane went out on a limb. Uh, but but you, you, you'll be the judge. Let's have a look at the scores on the doors. <laughs> and it's Bruce one, critics nil. Right. Let's have a look at it. It's nice piano. Wonderful percussion. Christine is stealing eggs. That's against the law. Look out. Oh dear. Derek Graves, wonderful actor. Spotted him in rep. You can tighten this time, miss. What? Only don't make a habit of it. Or you have to He's not happy, is he? <laughs> he's furious because he's been disturbed in his efforts to teach a talking pig to round up sheep. <laughs> That'll do, pig. Oh, 
there, Charlotte Hemp. Lovely actress. Look at that. I said, give me fatigue, and she just mopped her brow. We had a, we had a shorthand. In comes Christine. That's nice. Light source behind. Nice soft light. Reach into my jug. Not from the pantry. And kiss me. No, no, of course not. Reach into no. my jug and tell me yes. I'll sit you on my knee. I'll share a cup of tea. I've got something for you. Can you guess? <laughs> Wonderful song. From the New Avengers. Sang originally by Joanna Lumley. Hello, Joe. Nice camera work here from Danny Hall. Always at his best shooting through chairs. A skill that he now puts to great effect in Bargain Hunt, David Dickinson. Madman. Put some clothes on, you look disgusting. Nice line from Bruce. Difficult one for Bruce, very hard for him not to Where's say, William? put some clothes on, you look disgusting. Here comes one Denny shooting friends. through glass, not darkly. Looks like she's been celebrating early. Nice to see you. Didn't she do well? And we're outdoors. We're in the car. Oh, chitty hue, chitty pretty, chitty bang bang. <laughs> Michael Ball, no thank you. I've already eaten. Morris dancing. Not anymore, of course. Now it's down to Barry and Robin. Wonderful scene, this David Lean like in its scale and scope. And for me, it brought back so many memories. I grew up in fairgrounds as a child of my parents. We had a, a Dodgem concession. And it stayed with me. I mean, to this day, if I see a convertible, I'll jump on the boot. Scream if you want to go faster. <laughs> I have to say, this whole thing, with all the Union Jacks and the so forth, very reminiscent of our recent Jubilee celebrations, which I played a vital role. I helped direct the television coverage of the pop concert from Buckingham Palace. Wonderful time. I had Denny Hall with me on Corgi Cam. Special camera rig giving us a sort of Corgi's eye view of events. And I met a great many of my heroes. Uh, Rod Stewart, Sir Cliff, of course, and Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. So. Mistook me for the Duke of Edinburgh. <laughs> Tried to lick the back of my head. <laughs> I wrestled him to the ground. <laughs> I think it's what Prince Philip would have wanted. Here's a nice shot now. Pan, stick, bang. Next time you take orders from me. Well, this is vintage Delane in the composition. Look at that. We've got drama in the foreground. Yes. And sex what? in the background, in the form of bare-chested <laughs> young actor. Well done, Bruce. Lovely, lovely acting there. That's very nice. It's a pity you girls don't think of the expense involved getting replacements. But I can work until January. Things have not gone well, obviously. Of course I know. And Bruce is thanking the young lady for coming on the show and saying, "Well done. You tried your best. Some of the games are difficult." We realise that, but we hope you give our love and our regards to everybody back in Swansea and uh, have a good trip home. You're not going to go away, uh, not going to go away empty-handed, he says. <laughs> and uh, there we are, scores in the doors, Here, now get out. <laughs> and off you go. That's his. There we are. That, that's that's your Brucey bonus, he says. And now, you see, now. Simon Foster, look at that look of concentration, sly grin, because he knows he's going to have to do his very best if he's going to remember everything on the conveyor belt. Who's that? Lieutenant Connor. Who? Um, That's a nice shot. Well done, Denny. Oh. Denny Hall, the hero of our the cameraman, DOP, director of photography, <laughs> shooting through the bedhead. We've all done it. Why has he got two names? And so very That's simply, shy, like just using sound and vision, no. I've set up the scene. Oh. Well done, Peter. Do you know what he's famous for? Sly. And it's a love scene. It's, it's, it's a tender Damn scene. 
And once again, look what old Delane is doing. I'm putting action foreground, light source, background. Bloody great window. Look at those scissors. Look at those scissors. Huge scissors. I used to try and get a large pair of scissors into every show I ever did. If you ever get a chance to uh, look at uh, episode four, season two, Duchess of Duke Street, watch out for Kate O'Mara in the drawing room. Absolutely massive set. I mean, technically, there she is. Faintly indecent somehow, talking about it with your cousin. <laughs> faintly indecent, talking there we are. That rings bell, that's the oh, title yeah, of the show I'm currently out. working on for Channel 5 oh, with uh, Denise Van Outen. Heart to heart. You know. This is a wonderful it's scene. Charged with eroticism. I'm sorry. I've often said that a great scene is like two grandmasters playing chess, using their emotions as pieces. Well, this, this is buckaroo with the story as the mule, and the emotion slowly placed on his back, one by pay. one. The spade, the rope, the lead pipe, Colonel Mustard, until he can bear no more, and bang! And that is a Peter Delane production. Kaplunk! And that's where we take a break. Do join me in a few moments for some more Golden the Memories. Story of my life. Someday I'm gonna write the story of my life. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, my name is Peter Delane. Christmas 1981, I was in the Dolomites with dear Penelope Keith, who handed me a script entitled The Bounder, went on to become the most important work I undertook. It became my Lear, if you like. When you're building a Lear jet, you need jolly good engines. Well, I've got two of the best. The governor, Peter Bowles. Chameleon of an actor, one is never quite sure what he's about to give us. Would it be posh with moustache? Or... George Cole, as well, of course, my Robin to Peter's Batman, riding high at the time on the success of the Sweeney. I'm home. Where are you, Mary? Rosalind Ayres waiting to come in. And already I've introduced the three main players. We, we, we've met Barry, Robin and Morris. Earth, wind and fire. So solid crew. Now let them sing. Uh, and, and sing they do. And it was a subject matter that absolutely fascinated me. Uh, this idea of a man having been in isolation, in prison, and then being released into society. How does he cope? And it was no shock that they got Peter in to do it, because, of course, it rang a lot of bells with old uh, Peter Birdman of Alcatraz Delane, because I recently got out of uh, clinky myself. Uh, it served a short to midterm sentence for an incident which I now look upon as as a cry for help. I mean, not as not as loud a cry as that of my hostages, but <laughs> thoughts for the families. I, I do keep in touch with the families. It's not what they want, but I mean, it helps me. And as the judge said, Mr. Delane, you leave this courtroom with a considerable stain on your character, in the company of two rather burly chaps from Group Four Security. <laughs> I will say, and have said, that my time inside was not wasted. I, I, I seized upon it with a venom. I, I founded the Belmarsh Merry Men, wonderful dramatic society. We mounted a superb all-male production of the Mikado, which I still say is amongst Leslie Grantham's best work. I only wish he'd kept up the acting once he got out. And the Merry Men, of course, went down in history as, as one of the most creative rooftop protests ever mounted. Uh, super impromptu a cappella performance of uh, Fiddler on the Roof, which was uh, rather apt because it was led by their musical director, Jerry Feldman, who was doing six years for tax evasion. And look, look at George here, look at George, look at the hands, the whole body, even the chair is being called into service here. Absolute hurricane of an actor, George. Absolute hurricane. I used to say, storm warning, hurricane George approaching. And there was only one man, one man, who could stand up to hurricane George. 
and that is... Ah, there he is! Peter Bowles. And look at George's face, look at George's face. <laughs> because he's... The... Well, there we are. He's not just facing Bowles. He's facing Bowles with a limp. Deadly combination. I mean, it's Rain Man, isn't it? <laughs> I'm an excellent driver. And I think that's true of Peter. Wonder. Actually, he's a wonderful driver. Spent a super summer afternoon with him at Bewley Motor Museum once, pro-celebrity to a vintage car rally. Peter behind the wheel of a Jensen Interceptor. Wonderful sight. Probably the double glazing. Double glazing? Can't help looking at that set and absolutely rejoicing in the fireplace, which was my idea in the original script. It said the house was centrally heated, but I wanted a fireplace to, to symbolically represent the sort of incendiary nature of the relationship between Peter and George's characters. I was, in those days, I was firing on all cylinders. A lot of ideas come. I was in literally an ideas factory, and I used to have Peter and George's agents on the phone because I think they were confused. I remember that we, I took Peter and George on a bonding weekend in the Welsh hills, the Brecon Beacons, and uh, sort of, you know, orienteering, raft building on dry land. I mean, they have to fight with the futility of it, which, which, I, which I thought was good. And uh, we did it in the middle of winter, middle of winter, and of course, poor George caught hypothermia, desperately ill, desperately ill. But I think that smile there, that smile there, wouldn't have come without that near-death experience. And likewise, I don't think I would have mounted these, these escapades were it not for the fact that I was still experimenting with the dosage, trying to find the, the right cocktail of medication to, 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 to keep Peter happy. <laughs> because I deserve to be happy. I do. That's something I learned in therapy. Group therapy is something I would recommend if, if, if you've ever been feeling a bit sort of down in the dumps. You all sit in a circle and talk about your problems. And at the end, you get a round of applause. Was one time I got a Mexican wave. <laughs> Lucky old Peter. And look at the tie. Look what I've done with the tie. It's more than a tie. It's a representation of virility. It's manhood, it's saying I'm the alpha male, I'm the provider, so that even with his back to the audience, he still controls the sexual tension of the scene. Make yourself comfortable. Ah, you bastard. I was working with such gifted actors. Rosalind Ayres. Peter Bowles, George Cole. Ayres, Bowles, Cole. A, B, C. Bring in old Peter Delane, you've got A, B, C, D. Where could we go from there? There was one man to take us up the alphabet. Mr Edmonds. I had many talks with Noel about coming on board and joining us. Many meetings. Not always amicable. I said, no, we've got a house. We've got celebrities in that house. There's a party atmosphere. Never saw him again. Next thing I know, he's showing his crinkly ass to anyone who will watch. Now, that's a classic Delane, two. Two in a box, one down, one up. Balance. But look what I'm doing in the foreground. Look what I've done. I placed a box file in the foreground. And on top of the box file, as you'll see when we pull back, well done, Danny Hall on camera, medically a dwarf, there it is. I've got a cane, what does that tell you? Well, within the box, secrets. And what's stopping us getting to the secrets? Our old friend, sexual imagery. It's long, it's smooth, it's dark, and it's curved at one end. That's not uncommon, actually. The naked lust beneath that smug mask of respectability. What makes these people... Nice shot, just a hint of George there, and then we come to the face. And I start to use faces now. Let the faces tell the stories. Moving closer. Look at the eyes, look what the eyes are doing. I think the moustache is doing as much. George, of course, is bareback. He, he has no moustache, and so the face becomes impassive. 
but we're moving in closer every time. Well done, Denny Hall on camera. Well done. Out, but still moving, still moving. Look at it, still moving. Still moving. It's good, fellas. And we're out. Is the money. Now, this is a wonderful scene for film students. How do I tell the audience that time has passed? Do I do it through words? Do I show a clock on the wall? No, that's a cliche. I do it through suggestion. I do it through illusion. I'm an illusionist. I am, I am David Copperfield, trapped in a perspex case dangling over the river Thames of your imagination. Throw all the eggs you like at me, because I shall make an omelette with them. An omelette of drama. Yeah. Only using the whites. I'm on a protein-free diet. Cholesterol. Healthy old Peter. Well done, Rosalind. Well done, George. Kitchen sink, isn't it? Archie Wright. Ian Wright. Steve Wright in the afternoon. And this is a lovely setup. Arthur comes into the lockup, finds Terry suffering from the effects of an old boxing injury. And you know we had to shoot this scene twice. The power of Peter's performance such that a young stagehand rushed on in the middle of a take and actually assisted him. I tore down from the gallery straight onto the set and put a protective hand on the young man's shoulder. And I, I said, no. I said, that is acting. And you know who that young boy was. <laughs> Neither do I. I had him sacked. Happy days. Live as it happens, it's the night shift on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. That's at five past midnight. On the way next tonight, it's Great Escapes. Tell about the night we met And how my heart can forget the way you smile at me